Uh, if you have your Bibles, we're going to ask you to turn to two scriptures. Acts chapter 1, first of all. And when you've found it, please stand with us and we're going to read responsibly. And once you've found that one, we're going to go with Second Peter chapter 1. So... <clears throat> Are we ready? Amen. We're going to begin at verse 4, and we're going to read down through 8. Let me put my little specs on here. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye should be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Together. But ye shall receive power after, after that, that the Holy, Holy Ghost is come, come upon you. you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. All right, turn now, if you will, to Second Peter chapter 1. You have it, say amen. We're going to begin in verse number one and read down through verse four. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby, whereby are giving given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this very special day, Lord, that's been designated as Mother's Day. And Lord God, the nation has set it aside and honored this day. And so we thank you, Lord God, for uh, we believe somehow your hand was in the, this making, oh God, showing your appreciation for the mothers. So we appreciate it. We thank you, Lord God, for their is certainly uh, something very appropriate about taking the time to honor Lord God the Mother. So we, we join in with the wisdom of the nation, the wisdom of God, and, and thank you and honor them, Lord God. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray that every mother's heart will be strengthened today. Oh God, let mothers be inspired and encouraged, lift up the heads that may be bowed down, strengthen their hearts. We pray, O oh God, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, you may be seated. I wanna talk briefly about mothers under divine influence. Mothers under divine influence. We see the scriptures in Peter and Acts both had to do with uh, endowment with power for life and service. A woman, a mother is born 
with the ability to influence. There's something about the mother that, or the woman, that it's like an innate quality. They influence, they can influence. And they have that about them. The Bible says that in the book of Genesis, God says, let us make um, man in our image and after our likeness. And after he made man, there was something, something incomplete about him. This was God's assessment. And he said it's not good. Everything that he made, God said, that's good. Then he made man, and he looked at man, he set him in the garden, and then he thought, it's not good that man should be alone. Isn't that interesting? He said, I will make him a helper <clears throat> suitable for him. So women are born with influence, the ability to influence But before they become aware of this innate quality, they may grow and become influenced by someone or something else. In the garden, we see Eve was influenced by the serpent, which cost humanity for the rest of the days on earth. From the time that an infant is being formed in the womb, the mother's impact is felt on that infant. Sometimes there are many hurts and rejections and fears. They can be traced back to when the child was in the womb. The condition of the mother during her pregnancies, the attitudes, the images, whether it's positive or negative, can have an impact on the, the infant. There's that influence. The likes and the dislikes may impact them. Uh, there's the trauma during pregnancy affects the babies. So in the, in, but in the same way, the things that are positive while the baby is in the womb can have a positive impact on that child. A mother can, and you've heard how many mothers, when they're, they are pregnant, they lay their hands on their stomach and pray and speak words of life over that young embryo. And not to their amazement, but to other people's amazement, sometimes they, when they come forth, uh, there's an impact on that child. Mothers under divine influence. So mothers have a powerful way of influencing and as I was looking at the word influence it is the capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something. Somebody say influence. Mothers have that which is given by God. Some, thank God, or use it wisely because they are well aware of it. And unfortunately, there are some that do not. Today's message is entitled, Mothers Under Divine Influence. 
Mothers under the influence of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Lord spoke to my spirit. Mothers under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so we read in Acts chapter 1. Jesus told the apostles, uh, wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with divine power, with power from on high. That included men and women, right? And then we see Second Peter says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according to as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that's called us to glory and virtue. Then he goes on to say, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises. Someone say promises. That by these promises, you might be partakers of another nature, the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. And I believe that the Lord wants to encourage the mothers today uh, with the inspiration of knowing and understanding that you are and can be influenced or under the influence of the Holy Ghost and you can become not ordinary mothers you can become not ordinary women but you can become women under the power and the influence of the Holy Ghost like superhumans so um, there are three major influence, sources of influence. That's God, Satan, and people. Isn't that right? Three major sources. And he shared several things, about five things that he was sharing with me about the women of influence and how the Holy Spirit does and will influence in these areas. The first one is God, divine influence or the influence of God's peace on the mother. The influence of God's peace on the mother. I want you to uh, turn with me in John chapter 14. John 14 says, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Divine influence upon the soul. Mothers, the Lord wants his influence upon your soul today so that you can have God's peace. God's peace is different from just peace. God's peace will do something to your troubled mind. Hallelujah. God's peace. God's peace. In John 16, 33 says, Jesus said, uh, these things have I spoken to you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We're in a time where we need 
peace. You re look on the TV, you see the major war that's uh, taking place right now in Ukraine. You, there are other wars that, we may, that may not make the news that are going on. And we know what the scripture says concerning the end times, right? And he talks about the beginnings of sorrows, things that are coming upon the world. Uh, they are still, it looks like COVID is still trying to resurface itself. It's when people get started to sort of let their hair down or try to get back to normal. So no one really knows how long this is going to take place and uh, subtly is still taking people out of here. So no one wants to think in terms of having COVID because they don't know whether it will become detrimental to their lives. Some of those that had COVID are still having effects after months and months of being over it. So there's, there's, there's concerns for humanity. There, 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 there's so much going on in our cities now. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the sons of the mothers uh, have lost their lives. And not only in that way, but even through that which is established the police forces. Things are happening now that can disturb the peace and then and, 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 and there uh, as a Christian mother. Uh, uh, I, I don't know how the mothers in the world are faring right now. I, I, I cannot imagine how they are coping right now because they don't have what you have. They don't have that divine influence that can move upon the soul when they are troubled. They don't have that divine impact that the Holy Spirit can make. But you have it because you are born of God and the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And if you are not experiencing God's peace, then today God wants you to know that it is available to you. Influence of God's peace. Mothers under divine influence. There's so many things can, can influence your lives and my life's mothers. And, 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 and we do have to be careful what we allow to influence us. Isn't that right? But it's a good thing to be influenced by God's power. Second thing he mentioned was the influence of God's love. First Corinthians 13 tells us it says verse 4 charity or love suffers long is kind charity does not envy charity vaunts not itself is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, charity seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, think it no evil, rejoice it not in iniquity, but rejoice it in the truth, beareth all things, believe it all things, hope it all things, endure it, all things. God wants the divine influence upon us today, mothers, uh, where when it seemed like I, I'm tired, I don't want to go any further. He wants that divine influence upon your soul to say, I can go a little further. I feel my help coming. Hallelujah. Divine influence upon the soul. It says that... Uh, the love bear it all things, believe it all things, and hope it all things, and, and endure it 
all things. Uh, when that divine influence is upon the mother's soul or the father's soul, when that influence is there, you, you can go further. You can do what you wouldn't do or, or, ordinarily. Uh, there's somehow or another you can find yourself being patient in tribulation because of the divine impact of God's spirit upon the soul. God's love. I heard old man Paul uh, when he was defending himself in the apostolic and he was saying uh, whether we be this way or whatever, whether we be beside ourselves, you know, you know, it's to God's glory. God know it. But then he said, the love of God constrains us. There's something about the love of God will compel us. When I, want, when I don't want to uh, reach out to love, then that love of God will compel me. Being under the influence of God's love, God gives us his powerful Holy Spirit that he may influence us beyond ourselves. Isn't that right? Glory to God. So that uh, uh, divine influence or the mother's under divine influence. I, I want you to picture this, the, the mothers now that are, that are impacted by the spirit of God. They, they're, they're different, you see, because uh, they've got uh, some unusual strength available to them, you see. And so God was saying uh, the mothers uh, uh, under divine influence. You know, they, 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 like I said before, you can be influenced by the weather. You can be influenced by the condition of this world, you can be influenced by men, you can be influenced by other things, but what God wants now is you to be divinely influenced and divinely impacted. Hallelujah. All said the love of God constrains us, it compels us, keeps us going when we wouldn't be doing, you know. And then the third thing he what I mentioned was the influence of God's purity. Purity deals with cleanness, moral purity, virtuous. Isn't that right? When the Holy Spirit impacts us. Let, let, me, let me read what he says in 1 John chapter 3. We, we, we need the Holy Spirit now more than ever. We need the impact that God can have upon a person's soul. First John, he says in chapter 3, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Now look at this. And every man that hath this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. You see, we have to keep in mind the coming of the Lord. He could come at any time. Isn't that right? Uh, uh, and the Holy Spirit, as we stay in tune with the Holy Spirit, he keeps us in a state of readiness. He keeps us aware and alert so we, we won't find ourselves uh, 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 morally uh, uh, casting aside the, the commitment to be holy. Isn't that right? Because that the, the, the impact of God is upon us. He's upon our mind. He's upon our soul. He's moving upon us and when, when uh, uh, as Paul said, he, he, he's compelling us and constraining us and keeping us from going this way and that way. And God is keeping us. Let me read a little further. He says, um, verse 4, whosoever commits sin transgress also the law because sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that do righteousness is righteous. Isn't that right? Even as he's righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, 
the Son of God was manifested that he might do what? Destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. What he's saying does not continue sinning. For he, because his seed remains in him. And he cannot. Y'all with me? He cannot continue sinning. Isn't that right? Because he's born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, are made known, and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that love not his brother. So he's, he's talking about purity. Isn't that right? It's, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the Lord and because you are looking for the Lord, that, that sense of awareness, the Lord could come at any time and that influence upon my soul will keep me wanting to stay in the straight and narrow. It'll keep me from, you know, not holding a grudge because I, I don't know when God may come, you see. God could come when I lay down at night and begin to say, I'm not going to let go and I'm not going to forgive. God could come, but forgiveness is right. Isn't that right? The influence of God upon my soul will cause me to want to walk right. Hallelujah. God influence, divine influence upon the, the, our lives. The mothers today, that's what God is saying. And then he went on to say the influence of God's spirit or the influence of God's power. I just read Acts chapter 1. And I'll read it again. He says, they were waiting. And uh, Luke wrote this book, this Acts of the Apostles. Former treatise have I made of Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Theophilus was a Christian gentleman. That's all that's known about him. Until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but do what? Wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you've heard of me. John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He's saying, wait, don't, don't, don't go out and try to do no ministry until, you know, you be endued with power. Don't, don't uh, wait for the promise. The promise of the spirit, the promise of the power. Wait. This work is not work of the flesh. Isn't that right? He said, so wait on the promise of the power of God. Wait on the promise of the divine influencer. Isn't that right? Wait on the promise of the Holy Spirit. And so they tarried there. You know the story in Jerusalem. Verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, you know, these apostles there, transportation was quite different. How in the world could they take this gospel to the then known world? They had influence. They had an influence bigger than life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I often say, and I've heard them say, with all the technology we got today, man is using his brains as smart as this technology, and still there's so much more of the, uh, uh, of the uh, world right now as we know it that the gospel has never been preached. But I believe if we get back to the Holy Ghost, yeah. hallelujah, glory to God. <laughs> God can take the little things that we have and amplify it and, and, and reach to this world. The influence of God's power. I want you to look at 2 Peter again. I'm going to read that again. Chapter 1. Or he says, uh, 
Uh, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according, listen to this, as his divine power hath given to us, look at the sponsor, that includes me, all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious, what? Promises. Promises. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world through lust. So we have a new nature. And what helps us when we embrace the promises. I have to embrace the promises, you see. It's not enough to see them and read them, but I must embrace them. As I embrace the promises, you see. And uh, something takes place here. So he's telling us that by these promises, we may be partakers of a new nature. Partakers of divine nature. So the divine impact of God's upon our lives must be felt and seen by the world that we live in. They must see that we are not ordinary people. They must see it because of the Holy Ghost upon our lives. That's what God wants to do for us. The influence of his power. I was thinking as he was talking to me about Catherine Coleman, who many of you know that she walked in such power, walked in such anointing. That all in the time that when she was having these meetings here, people would come at three o'clock for a seven o'clock meeting. And they would just wait. You see, when the Holy Ghost is, is influencing, people will come from everywhere. And let me tell you something else that took place. Every denomination that was of God came together in one place to hear the gospel priest and the demonstration of the power of God through the woman of God. It's not happened since then. All of man's planning, all of his ingenuity, all of his great expertise cannot bring denominations together. But the divine influence of the Holy Ghost can cause it to happen. And the time would fail me to tell you about Marie Woodsworth Edda. And she was preaching and it was told she was preaching an open air meeting there and she was preaching so hard and so long and all of a sudden she became a sign. She stood there and was froze position in a froze position for two days. In the act of preaching, God froze her for two days. And after two days, he lifted it and she kept right on preaching. Uh, she was a sign. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amy Simple McPherson, another woman of God, powerful woman of God that changed the course of history. God says, mothers, uh, I want you under the divine influence so you can impact your community, impact your city, impact your nation. People came from miles and miles away hear the gospel through these powerful women and there are many others but as he was talking to me I was thinking about it Benny Hinn hallelujah was sitting there or oh, he came three o'clock I think for a six o'clock or seven o'clock meeting he and a friend of his and they came and he was so excited he went and set up on the front row he tells 
And he was sitting on the front row and Captain Kuhlman came and she began to uh, uh, speak to him and the power of God from the time when the meeting started, from the time that the meeting started until the time that the meeting ended, he sat there with his hands up shaking. He couldn't move. The power of God was so on that man through Catherine Kuhlman's ministry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mothers, this can happen to you. I know things happen at certain times and all of these things, but the Holy Ghost gave me this word. He said, divine influence upon the mothers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Power. Hallelujah. And you, he says in Acts, you shall receive power. Whew. Glory to God. Sometimes we underestimate what we got through God. Isn't that right? You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. How many have been filled with the Holy Ghost? And glory to God. Hallelujah. That means you have received something dunamis. You have received some dynamite. You have received something that's much bigger than you can imagine. And once you understand and once you can make a contact and understand what, 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 what you got going for you, what you got is on you. And then when you begin to speak and when you begin to stand in God's stead, something take place, signs and wonders and miracles. God is able. His hand is on you, mothers. Hallelujah. Before Samson could do the wonderful things, he had to shake himself. Sometimes I believe, mothers, we may go through a lot and sometimes we have to stop and shake ourselves and, and begin to recognize and understand who now we are and whose we are. We, hallelujah, uh, mothers, we, 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 we can be influenced by God in a marvelous way. Once God impacts an individual, little becomes much when it's yielded to the touch of God's hand. The little boy that had two fish and five loaves of bread didn't know that he was going to feel several thousand people that day when he bought his lunch there. But that which is yielded to the touch of the divine influence can do more than what you can imagine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Influence of God's power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm told of how powerful these meetings were. Amy Simple McPherson in 1907 has said, went into a Pentecostal meeting this was the turn of the century where uh, it was just, they were called holy rollers. You know, it was a new thing. My God, but when she went into that meeting, her life never was the same again. She was impacted by the divine. Hallelujah. She said, this is no ordinary service here. She saw people falling under the power and she got impacted and she left that thing and God began to deal with that woman's life so much so and the hand of God was on her. She began to change the course of history. Saints of God, the mothers, uh, don't sell yourself short. God is still able. The divine of God, the influence of God's divine power. That's what he said. And the last thing he said was the influence of God's purpose. Hallelujah. And uh, 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 he took me. I remember him saying to me, it's not how you start out. But it's how you end up. Glory to God. You may start out and not too much is going on. You may feel like nothing is, is, is taking place thus far. But look at somebody says, not over yet. Not over yet. Hallelujah. It's how you end up. I remember how this gentleman, this prophet, down in Florida now, he's touching people all over the nation in some parts of the world. 
But he said for many, many years, looked like every program, everything that he did, just scarcity. No matter what he did, just a few. But he stuck with it. Now, people are coming from everywhere. Hallelujah. And they've been raised up and sent to different parts of the nation. Because of the impact of the Holy Spirit. Mothers, God wants to do something to you and through you. Some are weary. Some need to see something different. Hallelujah. Some feel stuck. Isn't that right? But God wants to impact you in a way that you've never known before. Look at somebody say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to look at Acts chapter 20 for, with me. When purpose, when a person is influenced by purpose, you don't stop them very easy. I want you to look at Paul. Chapter 20, verse 17, he, yeah, he had done, in verse 16 said, he had determined to sail to Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. He hasted, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem, the day of Pentecost. So he was headed in that direction, trying to get there to, on the day of Pentecost. Verse 17 said, and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. When they were come to him, he said to them, you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lion and weight of the Jew. Now, the Holy Spirit kind of stopped me there. Uh, he had purpose. Sometimes, because of the purpose, it brought tears. When you have a purpose, nothing says it's going to be easy. Serving the Lord, he said, with many tears, not a few, and temptations. You see, that's what the Lord, it's like the Lord says, just because you got to cry sometimes. <laughs> that's a part of it, isn't that right? But with purpose, you go on. Paul was telling them, say, y'all know the story. You know how I've served the Lord many, many tears. And with humility of mind, it took humility of mind because I'd have jumped ship. But because of the love constraining me and understanding that I, I was called to a divine purpose, I knew that I would not be obedient, disobedient to the heavenly vision. Are you with me? God gives us vision, mothers. God gives us assignments, and, and it's not always easy. Sometimes it makes you want to cry. Sometimes you have to cry. Sometimes there are things trying to stand in your way. But mothers, the influence of God's power will keep you going when you don't want to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, listen to what he said in verse 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable to you but I've showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. But listen to this, and now, purpose. Behold, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, except that the Holy Ghost witness in every city. Chains and afflictions, just waiting for me. Purpose. Somebody say purpose. purpose. 24 said, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear to myself so that I might do what? Finish my course. How? With joy. With joy. You see, you don't want to just finish it with a bad attitude. You don't want to finish it. God, take me home. I'm tired. I can't take no more. You don't want to finish that way. But you want to finish with joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. The key is not being moved. Isn't that right? He said, none of these things move me. I'm not sweet on myself. If I am, it ain't going to work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If I'm thinking too much of myself, Paul is saying it's going to cause some problems. It's going to cause some frustrations. I can't think too much of myself. I got to let self die. If I'm going to finish this course with joy, I've got to set him aside. I've got to see nothing but God. I've got to keep my focus when things don't look right. I've got to keep my focus when things don't act right, sound right. I've got to keep my focus looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I look at 2 Timothy when I read what Paul said. Hallelujah. Timothy preached the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at his testimony. He said, the time has come for my departure. Hallelujah. Somebody says, flight 57. My time has come. My departure is at hand. He said, he looked back. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. And now was laid up for me a crown of, that the righteous judge is going to give me. Brothers and sisters, there's crowns waiting for us um, when we serve the Lord and, and we serve it in the right attitude and keep on serving. Sometimes you feel like you've got to cry. Sometimes you may find yourself silently crying tears um, because the weight of the things that are happening to you. But that's all right. Um, look, keep looking to Jesus. Um, keep looking at the purpose. Um, keep looking at the plan of God. Uh, stay with it. Um, don't turn away from it. Um, look to Jesus. Um, let the influence of God power keep on influencing you hallelujah Paul Peter said gird up the loins of your mind keep the faith he said I fought a good fight I kept the faith I finished my course you want to finish your course isn't that right um, hallelujah I want to finish my course what God gave me a sign man hallelujah I remember Jesus to the woman at the well. The disciples came back and couldn't figure out why he's talking to this woman. They came in. And Jesus had a problem of not eating a whole lot. Look at somebody said, I need a little help then. <laughs> so Jesus wouldn't, wouldn't eat all the time. So the disciples observed him. And so that's what they did. So when he came back, they bought the food and said, Lord, Master, eat. I got, I got some meat. I got meat you don't know about. It. My meat is to do the will of God and to finish his purpose. Hallelujah. Glory. There's something about the influence of God upon a person when his purpose is at stake. Hallelujah. I believe God's got purpose for the mothers. I believe God got purpose for the fathers. Hallelujah. And there's some of you here, you've been through so much, Holy Ghost. You've been through so much. The devil tried to turn you back. He threw everything that God would allow to throw at you. But you're still here. You're still here. And you're blessing the Lord. You're you're coming to the sanctuary with your hands lifted up because you've been influenced by God. Hallelujah. 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 And the Bible says, yea, we are more than conquerors through Christ. So the influence of God is on your soul. And I have you to know the Holy Ghost would say, there's something big waiting for you. Whoever you are, some, God says, I've seen what you've gone through. I've seen how taxing has been on the soul. I've seen it from start to finish. I saw how Satan tried to turn you around. I saw how the people were against him. But God says, I got something that's waiting for you. He says, stay the course. Keep your eyes on me. Keep looking at the purpose. 
keep looking at the vision and I will bring it to pass. My influence is upon you. My influence is upon your soul. My influence is upon you. My power is upon you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God said to me to tell the people, all of this is attainable through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He said in order to be influenced by divine power. Hallelujah. He said we have to subdue the flesh. Discipline ourselves. Hallelujah. And then he began to tell me how, he said, in every walk of life, when people want something bad enough, they're willing to discipline themselves. That's what he was bringing to my mind. He said, take the athlete. You know, the Olympic participant. Look at the discipline that they have to have. The doctor that's training, he got to discipline himself. The person that wants to be physically fit, yeah, you got to discipline yourself. It's not going to come otherwise, isn't that right? And it's the same way with God. Hallelujah. I, I, I can't just say what I want to say, when I want to say it, how I want to say it. I, I got to learn to hold my peace, isn't that right? I, I, that sometimes I don't necessarily feel like getting before the throne of God but I looked in the heavens and I saw the forces that are just waiting to stop me and I knew I had to get before the Lord and get some divine help are you with me here discipline hallelujah discipline is essential if it's essential for the athlete the runner hallelujah it's discipline it's Essential for us. Glory to God. Then he says, not only subdue the flesh, but he said, make friends with Jesus Christ. Make friends with Jesus. Listen to what Jesus said. I call you friends. If you do whatever I ask you, are you with me? Make friends with Jesus. Isn't that right? Let's learn to do what he tells us to do. Isn't that right? Glory to God. And then he said, embrace the promises. Embrace them. If God says, I'm going to heal you, say what God say. Things go better when we do that. Isn't that right? I find that when I agree with God, he gets involved. But if I contradict him, he's got to get my speech right. Isn't that right? But if I agree with him, it makes his job so much easier. Hallelujah. And the last thing that he says, he says, some are tired. Some are tired. He said, some are tired because there are li there's little or no discipline. And then he said, some are tired because there's not that sensitivity to God's voice. He said, take heed how you hear, isn't that right? And then he says, it's a problem in the heart. Sin sometimes harden our hearts. And then the last thing that he said, we must learn to cast all of our cares on him, knowing that he cares for us. Every care, every concern must be rolled over to him. Somebody bigger than you and I. Would you stand with me today? Somebody bigger than you and I, somebody that cares about everything that we face, someone that has an all-seeing eye, 
He sees it all. And he said, roll every care over on me because I care for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I give you thanks. We come to roll every care over on you, every concern, everything that we cannot work out ourselves, everything that's bigger than we are. We roll these cares over on you. I thank you because you got big hands. Because you said my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. You can take on my burden, my brother's burden, and everybody else's burden. Hallelujah. I thank you right now. And I give you praise. And this last thing I'm going to do is just give any and every one of you a chance to just Roll every care over on him. We're in a world now where there's so much going on. So many things vying for our attention. But God, he also is calling for us. So let me, let me help. Let me influence. Let me impact. Hallelujah. I can make you bigger than life. Hallelujah. If you're here today and you says, yeah, Lord, I was one of those. I was a little bit weary, just weary, but I just want strength from you today, Lord. We don't plan to prolong the service today. We've got about 10 minutes and we're going to pray. To roll your cares if you have concerns that you want to deal with God to deal with just we're going to pray a prayer if you come to the altar it's fine if you don't we're still going to pray God is able